Hello, I hope you're doing fantastic. In this video, we're going to dive into some specific data types that you'll encounter as you begin to program with Arduino. Specifically, we're going to talk a little bit more about data types. We'll be talking about integer and integer qualifiers, the long, floats, bytes, boolean, and character data types. So let's talk a little bit more about data types. We know that when we create a variable, we need to declare its data type. And a data type is simply a way to classify what types of stuff that you're going to put in a variable. So data type determines a couple things. How big of a number can go into that variable? How much space and memory needs to be set aside for that variable? And what types of operations can be performed on that variable? We'll start our discussion of data types with the most common data type that you'll see in this course. And that's the integer, which is abbreviated INT when you type it into the Arduino IDE. Now the integer, it's really the go-to data type if you need to store a number. An integer can hold a value from negative 32,768 all the way up to 32,767. Now the integer only holds whole numbers. You can't store 3.14 in an integer. That is, any number with a decimal place can't be stored in an integer. Now an integer, it's a 16-bit value. So it takes 16 bits of memory to store an integer. That's two bytes. It doesn't matter if you put a small number in that integer variable, like 10, or a big number, like 30,000. The compiler is going to still set aside two bytes for either integer. Now, in the grand scheme of things, that's pretty small. And that's why integers are our friends. They don't take up that much space, and you can still hold a pretty big value. Now, what happens if you try to put a number bigger than 32,767 inside an integer variable? Well, it actually rolls over. So you know how Pac-Man, if it goes off the screen, it comes back on the other side? Same deal with variables. If we add 1 to an integer variable storing 32,767, we actually get negative 32,768. It rolls over. Likewise, if you subtract 1 from negative 32,768, you get positive 32,767. This leads us to a really important point. When you create a variable, you should have some idea about how big you expect the value that's going to be stored in it to be. And that value is going to help you determine what data type you should use for a given variable. I mean, remember the key point of variables is that they change. At some point, you'll be doing a calculation on the variable, very likely. And so if the value of that variable exceeds the size of the container, it's going to roll over. And you can imagine that might return some really weird results. Now, what if you need to store a number bigger than 32,767? What then? Well, we have a couple options. But before we abandon the integer for a data type that takes up more of our precious memory storage, let's talk about what signed and unsigned means. By default, an integer is signed. That is, it can have a range in negative values. So when we say signed, we're talking about the fact that the value can be negative or positive, like a negative sign or a positive sign. But what if we plan to store a number in a variable that's never going to store any negative values? For example, if I'm using a variable to store the number of days that have passed, there's never going to be any negative days. The number's only going to increase from its starting point. Unless, you know, if I jump in like a DeLorean or something. Now, if this is the case, we can use what's called a qualifier to make an unsigned integer. And what this does is it, get, it gets rid of all the negative values and shifts them into the positive range. To use the unsigned qualifier, all you have to do is write unsigned before the int data type. And voila, now you can store a value in the range from 0 to 65,535. And you're still only using two bytes of storage. Pretty awesome. It's the same deal for rolling over. If you add 1 to 65,535, you're going to roll back to 0. So what if you need a number bigger than 65,535? That brings us to a long. Long is a data type that stores 4 bytes of data and holds a value from negative 2,147,483,648 to positive 2,147,483,647. Whew! 
You can think of a long as a big integer. It acts really the same way. It can only hold whole numbers, and as you probably guess, you can also qualify a long as an unsigned long. And this reaps you a whopping range of zero all the way up to four million and some change. But you know, we keep running into this whole number wall though. What if I want to store a decimal value? In programming, a number with a decimal point is called a floating point number. The point can float around the number. The data type for a floating point number is simply the float. And it can hold a value in the range from 340 undecillion, 282 decillion, 350 nonillion. That's pretty big. So you might be thinking, geez, how much memory does it take to store a floating point number? Well, it's actually a cool four bytes. That's right, no bigger than the long. How is this possible? Well, it comes down to precision. In reality, a floating point number is only good up to six to seven actual numbers that mean anything. And that's the total number, not the number to the right side of the decimal point. So a number like 4056.897 would be within the precision of a floating point number. You can see we only have seven actual digits there. Or something like 40.1234. But numbers after that, the numbers that are less significant, they're going to be rounded off, chopped off, and battered. You really don't know exactly how the compiler is going to handle them. Now, big floating point numbers can be made using a capital E following the number. So 42E2 means 42 times 10 to the second, or 4200. You can think of the number that follows the E as the number of zeros you want to add to the number before the E. Now, to be honest, I hardly ever use the E. I just want to throw it out there, so if you ever see it, you know what's up. The next data type I want to talk about is the byte. A byte can store a number from 0 to 255. As the name implies, it only takes up one byte of storage. That's pretty dang small. You won't see me using a byte all that often. I figure if I add one more byte, I'm going to get an integer. Integer has a whole lot more capacity than a byte, and that's why it's kind of my go-to value. Now, if I was really in a pinch for memory, then I'd probably start looking very closely at what variables I'm using. You know, if I'm using a lot of integers, maybe I could turn them into bytes, that type of thing. But for the most part, I go to the integer. Now, you might see a number like B10010 being set equal to a byte. What this is, this is a number that's being represented in the binary numeral system. And B is the binary formatter. And what that does is it lets the computer know to interpret the number following the B as a binary number. Now, we're not going to get into the binary numeral system because we really don't need to right now. now. You can check out in the further reading section if you want to learn more about that. Now, there is a data type that goes smaller than a byte, and it's the Boolean data type. The Boolean data type only takes up one bit of data. It can hold one of two values, either true or false. Now, this is what's kind of interesting. What happens if you try to put the value 2 in a Boolean data type? Does it roll over? In fact, it doesn't. Because with Booleans, any value other than 0 is true. So negative 2, 5, 47, if you put them in a Boolean variable, they would be represented as true. Now, to be perfectly honest, false can be represented by a couple things. It can be represented by the keyword false, by the number 0, or the keyword low. We'll be talking much more about low later on. And the true state can be represented by the keyword true, any non-zero number, like we just talked about, and the keyword high. If a variable only needs to represent two states, then a Boolean data type is a good option to go with. This brings us to the final data type that I want to talk about, the character. A character data type takes one byte of storage and it holds a character symbol, like a letter. So the letter is actually stored as a number, and that number represents a specific text character in a system called ASCII. ASCII stands for the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And it's basically the way in programming that text is encoded numerically. Now, the character data type, it can be set equal to the actual character, like an A, a B, or a dollar sign, whatever, but you have to put single quotes around that character. Or, since characters are stored as numbers, you can actually assign it a number value. Now, that number value is equivalent to a letter. So, for example, these two lines of code would be equivalent, 
And that's because 97 is, in ASCII, a lowercase a. This also means that you can perform math on characters. We're not going to get into that now, but it's kind of neat. Well, that's it for data types. Let's review what we've talked about. We talked a little bit more about data types and what they do for us. We talked about integers, talked about the rollover of integers and that they only hold whole numbers. We talked about integer qualifiers, specifically unsigned. We talked about the long data type and that it's a really big number. We talked about floating point numbers with the float. We talked about the byte and how it holds a number from 0 to 255. We talked about the Boolean data type, which is either true or false. And then finally, we talked about the character data type. All right, well, I don't want you to get overwhelmed with all these data types. Don't feel like you have to have all these memorized. I'm just throwing them out there because I guarantee you're going to see them as you open up different programs. And I want you to be able to have a feel, just kind of an idea of what they represent. All right, look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Bye.